baby killers, adulterers, and families disappearing out of nowhere. And the best part is all these mysteries are true. We're going to talk about it in the review of True Horror Mysteries, The Babysitter Sitter, Killer, and more from Zenoscope Entertainment. See you in three. And welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of True Horror Mysteries, The Babysitter, Killer, and more by Cinescope Entertainment. And this issue recounts three real-life crimes of madness and murder that have never been solved. But before we get into it, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. Your attention is greatly appreciated. And make sure to stay tuned to the end for the score. Let's talk about the credits. This issue, which is an oversized issue, is written by Ken Jansons. Art by a big team here. We got Gabriel Hardim, Juan Francisco Mota, and Massimiliano Lamano. Colors by Max von Araujo. Letters by Taylor Esposito. And the main cover is by Leonardo Colopietro. It's a mouthful. Hopefully I'm saying all that right. So bear with me. We're trying to, we're trying to do good by these people. Make sure they get proper credit. Let's talk about the issue and what it is. It is a collection of three individual mysteries that are have occurred in real life from the states of Ohio, Michigan, and Oklahoma. And each mystery is surrounded by all kinds of weirdness and strange, not in a good way, wackiness, and all kinds of um, hidden agendas and mysteries and all kinds of theories about who happened, who is responsible for what, and where it comes into play. Now, on the flip side of that, the mysteries have yet to be solved. So you're get it, given a proper introduction to the mystery and given as much detail as you can fit into a comic style format, but they don't really resolve. So it's there's no creative license that's being taken here other than through the artistic rendering of the mysteries. Let's talk about each one in, in, in kind. First, you have the babysitter killer, which is from Circleville, Circleville Ohio, or I'm sorry, the which is from Michigan, and in that particular mystery, and this happened primarily in the 1970s, a series of youngsters who were, uh, I would say, late uh, elementary school to, to early middle school were snatched off the street. Apparently, after, from the forensic information, that when, after their bodies were discovered, they were fed and cared for and, 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 kept and maintained properly, and then they were killed. Through the series of investigations and bits of information that were released in some cases years and even decades later, we come to find out that many of the main suspects and even one of the police officers that was involved in the investigation were all connected to something called North Fox Island, which was a government run or, a, or, or charity run island where criminals could just sort of get away from prison for a period of time. Uh, just as a, uh, a benefit to help them reform and redeem themselves. But in the subsequent years to follow, it was discovered that North Fox Island is really a front for strange pedophile ring into sex traffickers and all kinds of weird stuff. Years later, the, su the suspects have been named or people who are connected to the killer were eventually named. But to this day, the color, the true killer of these children have has never been named and arrested and prosecuted. And there it ends. The second mystery, otherwise known as the Circleville, Circleville Letters Mystery, there's a lot of tongue twisters today, sorry about that folks. Circleville Letters Mystery comes from a period in Ohio where somebody started writing damning toxic, toxic letters to individuals in the community. The first letter accuses a woman of uh, having an affair. The next letter accuses a school official of uh, making inappropriate advances towards the bus drivers, and then on and on and on and on. And eventually what happens is the tension boiled over in this particular town because everybody's writing letters to each other, and it turns out that they never did find out who started the letter writing campaign and where it led to, but because there was so much tension and blaming and accusing and everybody getting all worked up, it eventually led to assault, uh, some deaths, and even prison time for certain individuals. But as that whole thing unfolded, we never do find out who started the original letter writing campaign and why they started it in the first place and how it escalated to that point. It was really a, a basically a downward spiral of accusations and fear and mistrust and 
uh, just general agitation throughout an entire town. And it boiled over into uh, booby traps and people putting signs on people's doors. And it just really turned into a big mess. But the mystery of who started the letter writing campaign and why was never uncovered. The third story is the Jameson family mystery, which is a story about the Jameson family. They, a husband and wife and their daughter get into a truck. They drive out to the woods to examine a, prop, a property. And this is in Oklahoma, but they suddenly disappear. They don't, nobody realizes they're missing for about a week until one day a hiker finds their truck. Everything's in good condition. Their wallet and keys and everything else are still in the truck, including the family dog who's still barking and alive and a big bag full of money. But what happened to the family is never discovered until many, many, many years later, where a hunter on a nearby trail finds human remains, which are bones and a little bit of the clothing. Uh, but as far as how, and they find out it is the Jameson family. But as far as what happened to the Jameson family, why they were killed, uh, did they was it a murder suicide? Were they killed by somebody else? Never find out. And then this comic goes through a series of touted theories as to what happened to the Jameson family. Some people believe it was a murder-suicide due to depression. Others believe it was some sort of drug-fueled um, or drug deal gone bad because there was some indication that maybe they had been involved with a known drug dealer. Others believe it may be related to the cult because they had certainly they had gotten to satanic rituals and maybe they got themselves involved with a cult that uh, killed them as part of some sort of ritual sacrifice. We never find out. And that's basically how the issue ends. Now, maybe that's your thing. If you're into true crime and, and you're into horror of a, of a realistic nature, this might be right up your alley. If you're not into true crime and you think this is basically a, a fictional horror story, it's not. It's very much grounded in reality as far as these are true events happening to true people. What do we like about true horror mysteries, the babysitter killer and more? Uh, Interesting to find out that there are horrific uh, crimes and things that happen to people in real life from a perspective of not all fiction is, or I should say not all fiction is truly fiction. Sometimes things that happen in real life that are stranger than fiction, as the saying goes. And if you like that sort of thing, you're in great shape. If you watch a lot of true crime, you might be interested in this. If you watch uh, a lot of documentary type sty style stuff where you're interested in conspiracy theories and maybe hidden uh, organizations that are and, and all kinds of uh, weird happenings that uh, corrupt the police and corrupt the federal government law investigators and stuff that doesn't come to light till till years later this is right up your alley and there's a lot of detail and to uh, Jansen's credit uh, he captures a quite a bit or summarizes it well enough to capture in a comic format what didn't we like about True Horror Mysteries, The Babysitter Killer? Uh, I think that the, the main issue is exactly that, that you're presented with a mystery, but there's no follow-up. There's no follow-through. There's no fictional account of the resolution. There's no resolution to anything. You're simply introduced to the mysteries and the details and some of the theories, and then it just stops. So if anything else, this feels like a collection of three teases that introduce you to the story, but you don't really get a full story. And I think that's kind of where most people will be put off is that they pick up comics to read a story. You're not getting a story. You're getting the introduction to an event, but there's no resolution to any of them. So you don't know what happened. There's no way to follow this up with, with a, maybe a, a, a second issue. I, I mean, maybe you could follow up with a second issue, but if they do follow it up with a second issue, it's most likely going to be more mysteries. And so it feels like a big tease in some ways. And maybe that was the intention. Who knows? But again, it, it, this probably appeals best to be folks who are really into true crime type of storytelling, which doesn't really follow a story format. It's more just telling you about these mysteries that have occurred. What about the art? Let's talk about the art. So we have a, you know, a sizable, not a sizable art team. We've seen much bigger, but a big enough art team because this is a, a an oversized book, which is... Uh, 50 pages, 50 pages or 48, not counting the covers and the credits. Uh, the art is good. I mean, you're, you pretty much have lots of still life images with people talking, uh, people sitting in jail, people in sitting in police stations, but you don't actually see the crimes occur. And I think maybe that may be part of the downside of why this doesn't hit as, as well as it should is you don't actually see the crimes occur. The crimes sort of happen either you're told about the crimes after the fact, 
you're showing the outcome of the crimes as far as how they affect the people that are still around, but you're never shown the crime. So, and I guess that's part of, you know, why it's a true life and not necessarily a fictionalized account, because if you, if you could show them the crime, you would know who did it, but that's, there it is. So most of this is just people standing around talking. You, you see some emotional reactions when people get bad news or they're terrified or they're, uh, or they're maybe fighting for, for their lives in prison or what, ha what have you. But most of it is just sta people standing around talking. It, it's very much a narrative or narrator driven type of story where the narrator is explaining what happened to people as you are seeing them in their everyday lives. Final thoughts. What do we think about true horror mysteries, the babysitter killer? Uh, it was, it's interesting, but really only good for people who like true crime type of documentaries. There's, it doesn't really follow a story format. There is no fictionalization because you're just given the facts and there, and you, there's not much by way of action. It's just simply dramatized art showing people in various stages of discussion or reaction to uh, getting bad news for the most part. So the art is good for what it can do, but there's not much to do. And so it's all about the narrator. And so in, in, to a certain degree, it's this is really only good for people who really like true crime where there is no answer to the mystery. Therefore, we're going to give True Horror Mysteries, The Babysitter Killer, a 6.8 out of 10, simply before the satisfaction level of not having any kind of way to end the story but in simply just by starting it. I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, if you like this type of uh, comic, let us know in the comic section. We'd like to hear your opinions. Do you like true crime? And if that's your thing, what, what's the best kind of true crime? Do you like it on podcasts? Do you like shows? Let us know. We would love to hear your opinion on this. And if you like comic reviews, please stay tuned in through the outro for the next one.